welcome back to episode two of a mouthful. mouthful. Wow, people can't even know the name. You are so dramatic. It's great. Like it's a mouthful. <laughs> You're a mouthful. You're a handful. That's for sure. What are we doing in this episode, Lisa? Okay, we are on to the main course. You saw our very elegant Christmas tree uh, starter. Well, controversially, but now we are on to the main course. We're doing something really beautiful, easy, but we're going to start with a cocktail. <gasps> what cocktail are we going to make, Lisa? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> what are you even doing? I see Prosecco, I see vodka, yep. and I see... <gasps> Sorbet. Lemon, lemon sorbet. sorbet. Lemon. You're so good at acting as if you don't know what I'm making. <laughs> well, you know, I'm trying to like make it look realistic for the kids at home. Well, this is what That's is called... That looks like face cream. <laughs> it could be. This is what's called traditionally, I think it's a scopino, oh. which is an Italian cocktail that I've had in my friend's restaurant and Dawn will tell you as well. Delicious. Amazing. The funny thing is, right, every time we go to this restaurant, we ask for it as, med as immediately as we walk in and they're like, no, 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 no. It's a dessert, basically, oh. a dessert cocktail, but because it's so good, I'm like, can we not just have any now? They're like, mamma mia, come on. My Italian but is But we're gonna call good. it a Christmas spritz. We're calling it a Christmas Italian spritz. It's very simple. A bit like you. As always, we are not going to, Dawn, don't laugh at him. You need some lemon sorbet. I've got to tell you, right, obviously you can buy one that is cheaper than this, Yes. but the Romeo ice cream full stop is and Incredible. where are we getting that from? Uh, I think you can get it from like Sainsbury's, Cardo, okay, it's, it's okay. everywhere. Okay. But it's so delicious. Right. <laughs> it looks a bit cold. <laughs> it's so Is it supposed to be like, again, I don't really know what the measurements are, so I don't know what it's supposed to be or taste like or anything. Well then, lucky for you, because you are in for a right, treat. Just... Quick story. Make Our friend good. Mark, who is just brilliant. During lockdown, we used to do these cocktail videos together. And one day I said, well, we need to make this together. And I told him he needed lemon sorbet, but he lives in a small area of Dublin. And he went to the corner shop and he made friends with this guy in the corner shop quite a lot during lockdown. Because I would go to, let's say, Tesco and spend, I don't know, 20 pounds on ingredients. But because this was a local corner shop and I was getting him to make all sorts of extravagant cocktails, he would go in and spend like 100 euro on the same ingredients that I would get. Anyway. I think you need lemon sorbet, Mark. Lemon sorbet, is that? Right, I'm back from the shop. I won't do my Irish accent, awful. I'm back from the shop. They didn't have lemon sorbet, but what they did have was ice and lemons. <laughs> oh God, was it all right? <laughs> so he was like squeezing lemon juice. And he was like, oh, fuck it, what the fuck, what the fuck is this? And then he'd like have to put sugar in it because it was like, getting... anyway, it was an absolute disaster. Do you Vodka does work though. Vodka is good. And here we go. Actually, this one, the one vodka, it's a really small business. How really nice. much vodka do we use compared to? This much. Is that it? Well, yeah, because we're going to put Prosecco on top as well. Oh, I feel like we need a bit more vodka Okie doke. There we go. If you say, maybe we do actually. Yeah, okay, fine. Yeah. Right, now what we've got to do, and this is a hard work, we're going to have to take some turns because it's quite an effort. <laughs> Whisk what it. are you doing? <laughs> Whisking it. I'm not singing a song. Anyway, right, look, it's definitely getting there. So it looks like icing sugar. Kind of looks like brains. No, it doesn't. It's is this? Really <laughs> <laughs> Everything we want to do is super quick, super easy, no stress. So you can have it ready. <laughs> as long as you've got a slave on hand. Uh, okay, I'm going to open some Prosecco. Okay, do you want to know another top tip? Go on then. Right, I don't know if it's about champagne or Prosecco or just champagne. It should twist six times, and then that's got the perfect pressure. Hmm. That was just Chris falling over a chair, in case you wondered. <laughs> Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. Perfect. It's like a miracle. It's a miracle. It's a Prosecco miracle, a pre-miracle. <laughs> right. If you've made it halfway through episode two, thank you. <laughs> oh! <laughs> it's okay. a party. Oh, sugar. Oh, oh God. No. Okay, so what you do is you put a little bit of that in, so about a third of the glass, okay? And then, I think you pour the Prosecco over the top, but we could, I'll just, it could be the other way around. No, I think we're good. Dawn, are you excited? I'm so you excited. haven't had one of these since we were at the red. I've... And is that it? No, that's that it. sounds amazing. I mean, I cannot wait to... Oh, God. Let's have a little go and just pour it all in. All the eclectic glasses, gorgeous. 
This is amazing. Well, let's see. It might not be as amazing as I can remember, but I'm hoping so. This does look really Christmassy, like kind of like snow. Okay, on good. On a Christmas morning. Right, okay, come on then. Let's have a mouthful. <laughs> okay, Jerry, I know you're really excited about this one. There you go. Dawn, Chris. everyone, cheers. Cheers, cheers, cheers. Cheers. Cheers, cheers. Oh, oh. God, spill it, spill it, spill it. Oh, man, that is good. That's nice, isn't it? Ooh, you can drink 10 of these. <laughs> There's a theme with my cocktails. <laughs> anyway, we have got our cocktail and now we're going on to our main course. And what are we making for that main course, Lisa? We are making my, I'm going to say famous, definitely not famous. We're making my favourite stew. Because I think a stew, can you stop acting surprised? You know what we're making. <laughs> Look, let's just pretend they don't know that I don't know that I know. Okay, they know right. that I know that they don't know. Um, so we're making a stew, which is really great, really easy, and also just not expensive yeah. because you can just get all the veg. We'll talk through that in a minute, but we're going to make a stew. And then the best bit is that Dom and I are having a mashed potato off. We are. So one of my favourite kinds of food is a one-pot meal, and I'm so looking forward to this beef stew. It's just everything into a bowl, and that is the best thing ever. One of my least favourite things that you do in one pot is a soup. Let's not talk about soup. Right. Like, do, no, no. <laughs> no. Soup is beautiful. It is good. It is blended vegetables, or chunky, whatever you want to do with it. It's good. It's cheap. Just because it doesn't like porridge either. No, okay, I like Heinz tomato soup. I like the chicken and sweet corn soup from the Chinese. Are you a child? And I like pho, like a pho Vietnamese soup. You like literally make the most amazing pasta sauce and then blend it up and make it into a soup. Right, well, I mean, I'd blend this stew. You would blend this stew into a beef soup. Oh my God, imagine. Anyway, right, we've got all the ingredients here. This is the great thing about a stew is that you can prep. So again, when we're talking about dinner parties, you can do this in the morning but ahead of the day because I get asked all the time because we host so much. How do you not get stressed? It's all about the prep. It is all about the prep. And if you have a slow cooker, it could go in a slow cooker. It's literally, it's, it's brilliant. It's a brilliant. Air fryer? I mean, we could try <laughs> Let's it. not. We're not putting <laughs> anything in an air fryer, Dominic. Okay, so we have got our beef stew. We've also got carrots, parsnips, uh, mushrooms, some garlic. And did we put butternut squash in here? We couldn't find any butternut squash, but I've got some in the fridge. Oh, I got some on Deliveroo. Well done. I got the pre-cut one because there's nothing worse than trying to cut up a butternut squash. All right, we'll do it, we'll do it. Let's start with the onions. Because that's only, actually the only bit that we, we sort of saute first. Yes, we? so we're literally going to take this over to the pot, which we've put olive oil and butter in. So this is the pot. Tell us why we've done olive oil and butter, Okay, Dom. so olive oil is nice and healthy. Butter brings the taste. But what is amazing about olive oil is that it stops the butter from burning which is genius, so you're gonna get gorgeous. And I've got two types of onion in here. We've got a beautiful banana schlot and a regular onion. And again, nice and chunky, just gonna kind of adds texture to the dish. Couple of bay leaves in there, and then some rosemary as well. All of this is just for flavor, basically. So with a stew, the longer it's cooked, the, the more you, you add, the better the flavor is. So it's gonna leave that in there, give that a bit of a stir, probably leave it. I'm gonna say for about five minutes max. Nice. So whilst your onion and all of that's cooking, sauteing, do you call it? Sorting. Sauteing. Okay, just checking. Right, I'm gonna take the beef and I'm gonna season it. So this is just a stewing beef. There's no need to buy any kind of like mega expensive. No, the cheapest beef. In fact, this most tastiest is the cheapest. There you go. And I'm taking some salt and this is sea salt, which we love. We do. There's no point going for like this kind of salt in one of these. No, no, it's just, that's just sodium. That's nasty stuff. Then pepper. I'm gonna cut up this uh, butternut squash whilst you're doing that. Okay. Then I'm gonna take some gluten-free flour. Now, putting flour on your beef is really important. <laughs> I'm not sure why. Oh, no, I actually know. No, I actually know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no, no. It's just the phrase, putting flour on your beef. It sounds really <laughs> filthy. <laughs> Why do you put flour on your beef? To thicken up the salt. <laughs> <laughs> to thicken oh, okay. up the sauce. Okay. All right, lovely. Okay, so you put that in and yeah. you just kind of mix it around. Now, How much flour did you use? Oh, okay. <laughs> oh god, I forgot it's you. Why bother asking if there's actual any measurements? Like to go just in? a bit like that. Okay. Also, if you're vegetarian, 
Sorry. <laughs> no, I reckon you could use like a nice firm sausage. Are you all right? I'm sorry. A nice firm veggie sausage. Yeah. You know, like a cauldron. They're yeah. really, really good. And then would you just put veggie, we'll put veggie just, stock? Yeah, just instead of using beef stock, use veggie stocks. Exactly the same, but just use veggie sausage. Okay, gorgeous. fine. Okay, so now that your onion and your garlic and your herbs are sautéed, oh, that it looks... smells good, man. Good. This is the easy bit, though, right? You just literally chuck everything in. I usually would do the beef first for absolutely no reason. <laughs> no, I just think that it's nice if it's in the middle. Well, there's no, like, pre-sautéing any of the rest of these veg. No, because I've sautéed so much already. That's amazing. Chuck it in then. Okay, all right. It's going in. All of it in there. That's amazing. Oh, that squash. Yep. Right. You've got potatoes here, but I wouldn't necessarily... We're making a mash. We'll put a few in. If you're not making a mash and you literally just want to serve it like this, definitely put potatoes in it. You can obviously do dumplings as well, but, like, who's got time for that? That's enough, I would say. Then, what you're going to do is you're going to take your stock, and I've got... Okay, I'm going to put a little bit more salt in. 500 ml of stock. I've got beef stock in here. Probably need a little bit more water. So I'll get some Was more. Is that like a message to me? Yeah, because you did the stock. Okay, go on then. Wine, wine. Half, a half, a whole bottle of wine. Half a bottle of red wine. Again, this was about £4.50, this bottle. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. In fact, better if it's not. Yeah, and then you just squeeze in some tomato puree, that's plenty. Then what's going to happen is that we're going to boil this and then we're going to cook it for about four hours on a slow cook, about 160, 140. That's fine. Perfect. Could I, like, make this the day before? Could you make it the day before? Absolutely. Hint, hint, yesterday, Dom made one the day before because we're like, we're busy. These guys are busy. We don't have four and a half, five hours to wait for us due to cook. So we've actually made one like we're on Blue Peter. And very often, like, stuff that's been made the day before tastes better. Like, everything's Definitely. had a moment to, to kind of bathe in its own juices. Exactly. So I'm going to take this back over to the hob and just let it boil just for five minutes before I literally chuck it in the oven. So whilst that's happening, lid on. Yep. Thank you. While that's happening, we're going to get the other one out of the oven. Say the, say the line then, Dom. What, the magic ingredient? Here's one I made earlier. Uh, <laughs> here is one I made earlier. Oh, oh look And at then let that. me get a spoon quick and just give that. Look at this. Now mix it all up. That looks so good. So amazing. Now what are we serving this with, Lisa? <gasps> We're going to serve it with some mashed potato. Amazing. Okay, it's mashed potato time. Mm -hmm. Now, I have been talking about this for a while. People don't have time to stand around and mash potatoes. You go and get your potatoes. Go on. I'm getting my potatoes, which are hardly going to need mashing because I have boiled them to perfection. Yeah, but you had to chop them, you had to peel them, all okay. that kind of stuff. What am I doing? Aunt Bessie's. I mean, all the major supermarkets do frozen mash. And this is literally potato, salt and pepper. There's nothing more to it. And you just bung them in the microwave. What the hell? See, I've got a kind of... I used to love smash. <laughs> I really did. I really love that. I really did. This... Why have you just chucked that on the floor? Because I didn't want it in the picture. <laughs> God's sake. Right, okay, try and eat a bit. No, it's frozen. <laughs> just... <laughs> You're a fool. But you know what's great about this is you can put these straight, if you're making like a shepherd's pie, you can put them frozen on the top of the shepherd's pie into the oven and they will melt and cook. Do you put water in them to put them nothing, in the microwave? Nothing, nothing. Right, off you go then. I'm going to do mine, you do yours. Right. Hold on, who's put these potatoes in my bowl? You're trying to, you're trying, <laughs> I am trying to, trying to sabotage, sabotage me. For God's okay. sake. These right. go into the microwave on full power for like three minutes. Okay. Mine do not go in the microwave. Guess what I don't have, though? A potato masher. <laughs> what? No, I don't have a potato masher. I was trying to find it the other day, and I was like, I don't think I've even got one. You know we have been talking about this potato mash off for a while. So you're using a spoon. <laughs> you're not even going to use a fork. You're using a spoon. OK, what I need, Don, please, is some butter. I'm getting this. I'm not helping you. Oh, OK, fine. Salt. In fact, I'm going to take the fork away as well. Salt. <laughs> butter. Loads of butter. What's it doing in my fridge? 
butter, butter, butter. So I, I mean, listen, it's not healthy, but who cares? Just kind of chuck it all in, like so. It's like half a thing of butter. Christmas, Christmas. I'm then gonna put in, what have you got now? Are you putting pesto in your mashed potato? Oh, okay, and mustard. No. Yeah. Dawn knows where everything is in this house. Oh yeah, look, so to me then. <laughs> yeah, so I'm gonna put a little bit of my... Okay, where have you put my potato? Nowhere, <laughs> nowhere. <laughs> okay, so yours is in the microwave. Yeah. I've got this here. I'm putting a little bit of milk in it. You can, I wouldn't recommend using oat milk, even though that's usually all I drink. Um, and then I'm gonna put Philadelphia in it. Right, hold on. Philadelphia obviously can use any cream cheese. Oh, that's fancy. It never used to look like that, did it, on top? Did it? It was always smooth. <laughs> I mean, don't use a clean spoon or anything, like, <laughs> Oh, we're all family here. Yeah, exactly. Pepper. Looking good, isn't it? It, do, it does look good, I will admit, it does look good. But we're gonna be, it's gonna be an anonymous taste test. So these guys like are gonna be- Like a blind taste. They're gonna have a mouthful. Get the name <gasps> in. Yeah, they should have a mouthful of the mash each and then see which one kind of comes out trumps. That was always the idea. Oh yeah, it was. <laughs> have I already said you're a mouthful? <laughs> you said I'm a handful. Oh yeah, all right. Okay, way. I mean the spoon mashing. Would you like a fork? Yeah. yeah. Dawn! No, I'm buying it. For, oh, no, I'm buying her something else. Something You'll buy me tongs. Head on it. Yeah. Okay, fine. Oh, God, my arm's aching already. Let me just use a spoon. Oh, <laughs> right, Dawn, you've had my mashed potato before. I know, and that was a mistake one, and it turned out amazing. It was the best thing ever. Oh, my arms really ache. God, this is a great technique. <laughs> Michelin star, right here. It's going to be a bit lumpy, but no. I mean, she loves herself, doesn't it? All right, I'm not going to, all right. Oh, what could that possibly be? <laughs> Still got a little more to go. <laughs> okay, this has just come out of the microwave. It is gorgeous how it is, because it's got all the ingredients in here, but I'm just going to, because it's Christmas, add a little bit of decadence to it. I'm even going to put a little bit of pesto in, the pesto that we made <laughs> in episode one. <laughs> Just a little bit. And some mustard. Mm. Oh, mustard mash is the best. See, I hate mustard. Oh, well. Not that I hate it, I just don't... What did mustard ever do to you? Nothing, but you have put posh dog mustard in, so it's like a, a hot dog mustard yeah, instead, so I quite like that. Okay, cool. Now, are we ready to do the taste test yeah. with the gang here? So, they're going to take a mouthful and see which one is best. Everyone close their eyes. Me as well? No, not you as well. <laughs> oh, for God's sake. Okay, ready? Eyes are closed. No. no, it's okay, we're nearly there, we're nearly there. It's not I'm a celebrity, I promise. Okay, right, okay. In your hand. Right, okay, ready? Taste that. Should I open my eyes? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is that first or second? First one. Okay. I don't know, I like them both for different reasons. The first one had a bit more of a punch mm -hmm. and flavour. As in it's the mustard. Well, don't I think... give it away that it's yours, you idiot. <laughs> I won. I want to celebrate. I won. Hold on. I won. Okay, Chris, what, what was your choice? Uh, he's going to change one. his mind. I don't know. I think number one is my favourite. But what I would say, fine, but I wait. Was, I thought number one No, it's his. Yours. Anyway, with Stu, I think mine's going to go better. Yeah, probably right. And on that note, I just want a great, I think this is a Jamie Oliver thing, but a bit of lemon rind and a bit of garlic and you put it on top of the stew and it brings out all the flavour. Well, that sounds amazing. Okay. Ooh. Here you go, a bit of this on there. Right, guys, now it's your time to taste this. Oh, yeah, come on, guys, get a mouthful. Have a mouthful of I'm just going to go in because I'm so one. hungry, yeah. Okay. Cheers. Cheers. Hold on, I've got to give one else theirs. Oh, okay. they can wait. There you go. Here you go, oh. Chris. Good? This is so good. It just tastes like mm. a big hug in a bowl. That was fantastic. Mm. Even if we say so ourselves. Dawn, have we tried it yet? 
Isn't the lemon and garlic on top nice? Yeah, it's really lovely. It kind of lifts it and oh, that is so good. What do you think, Cherry? That's a winter warmer. It's a good one. Chris is the last one to Let's give it a go. Give it a go. Who's mashed this? Mixed. Nice. Yeah. So good. Mm. I think oh, on the lemon as well. That yeah. Mm. It really does. Nice, right? I think it's on that nice. note, I'm going to finish this episode so we can sit down and actually enjoy this. So thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. Bye. <laughs> yeah.